You know, it's funny, uh, a couple years ago, I was gone for, from YouTube for a while. Uh, not as long as this time, but uh, anyways, when I came back, some guy was like, bro, I thought you died. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so no you know I wasn't dead then I'm not dead now <laughs> okay <laughs> um, so I want to read a few passages out in uh, 1 Corinthians and I also want to talk about uh, you know th there's some people that maybe they want to make some videos on YouTube, maybe not consistently, but make at least a few or something, right? Uh, telling people about Jesus, you know, preaching the gospel. And, you know, a lot of times people, they're like worried that uh, they, might, they might sound dumb or something, or, or you, know, you know, people might think they're stupid. And look, if you know the gospel, you don't have to worry about sounding stupid, okay? Uh, you know, as long as you're, you know the gospel and you're preaching it, you know, it doesn't matter if people think you're stupid, okay? And in fact, most people are going to think you're stupid, okay? And uh, even kind of talks about that sort of in 1 Corinthians, I'm going to start at verse 18 in chapter 1. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. And I'm going to read until verse 21 here. But, uh, you know, continuing. It says, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Have not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Um, and so, you know, if we continue reading, uh, chapter one, it, it sort of sh shows like how you know God thinks in, in opposites, like the opposite of the way the world thinks. Okay, and when it comes to preaching, uh, you know the the unbelievers they they think it's foolish. Okay, and you know. <laughs> A lot of times they're not going to get it the first time. Okay, they're, most people reject the gospel the first time, and tragically, most people are, are going to reject the gospel permanently. Um, but you know, just dust off your feet and just go to the next person. Okay, and you know, let let me give you an example of you know Jack Smack. Because, you know, he, he's got an extensive vocabulary. Like, you hear sermons, right? Uh, it's like, he's like a human thesaurus or something. Like, he's got a bunch of synonyms for, <laughs> for a lot, and descriptions for a lot of stuff. And sometimes he uses a bunch of, you know, words that most people... You know, maybe they've heard some, but it's just not even, like, common vernacular, right? Um, and people still hate his preaching, okay? Most people. And, see, so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter if it sounds smart or dumbed down or there's a bunch of big words or it's really simple words or if it's really long or if it's really short uh, most people are just going to think it's stupid no matter what okay um, 
because you know the uh, the wisdom of the world you know tells them that you just can't believe on Jesus to decide it, right and that you gotta do some work or something and so you know you I heard somebody say that you you know you got to keep plowing, you know, work that ground. <laughs> um, but you also got to sow everywhere, okay. And and you know, I, I've also personally seen you know people who don't want to hear the gospel that, you know, a few years later they wanted to hear it. Um, and so, don't, I guess my point is don't be so concerned about how, like how you sound as long as you're preaching the gospel. Okay. You know, if you're a stutterer, you could still win people with Jesus Christ. Um, if your vocabulary is not that extensive, you can still win people with Jesus Christ. Uh, if you're kind of monotone, you could still win people to Jesus Christ. If you got an accent that people think is funny, or if you got a lisp or something, you could still win people to Jesus Christ. Because um, it's, you know, it. it it's not you, it's the power of the gospel. Okay. And if somebody's uh, you know, willing to honestly listen to the gospel and to assess what you said about Jesus, you know, they'll they'll come to believe on him. Uh, because you know, pe people know that this world ain't right. <laughs> they know it, but they just don't know why. And a lot of people try to, you know, try to fill themselves with, you know, the pride of life and the pleasures of the world and all that stuff. But it, they always feel empty inside over, you know. Maybe they'll feel good for a season, but over time, they'll realize that there's kind of an, an emptiness to this life and that something's missing. And, you know, j just pray that when they're at that peak feeling that you run into them and that you're able to have what I call divine a divine appointment, uh, which, you know, is like an opportunity to preach them the gospel That's basically, you know, set up by God. Like, for example, uh, you get a flat tire and you think it ruins your day. Uh, but then you have to, like, you know, get your car towed or something because you don't have a jack. And then the guy who comes co tows your car, you end up winning him to Jesus Christ. And, and you know, like, <laughs> so like stuff that kind of seems weird if you're not paying attention. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, or like, like, God forbid you have a car accident, but if you do and then you end up winning the person to Jesus Christ that hit your car, like... <laughs> I would consider that a divine appointment. Um, or, 
or you know maybe you take public transportation and you know you live somewhere where there's like a train and you miss the train you usually take and you get on a, a later train and you meet somebody on the train and you're able to win that person and like stuff like that okay um, but anyways I'm gonna end this video but just remember that uh, you know people are gonna think you're foolish when you preach Christ most of the time okay there's really nothing you can do about that uh, you know it, it's it's not even really like an intellectual thing where you, like you know because some people that are intelligent in a bunch of other things uh, you know believe the gospel right when a 10 year old can tell them the gospel how to be saved right and then there's other people that are intelligent in other things you know and they can have somebody with a PhD preaching the gospel but that person's you know the, you know the so called intelligent person they, they have their, their heart hardened and they just don't want to hear any of it you know and the good thing about the gospel is that it's for everybody and it doesn't matter how intelligent you are or aren't you know how you know simple you are or whether you're rich or poor or, you know man or woman or anything like that it doesn't matter what color you are uh, Jesus died for you he loves you and he you know the gospel is the death burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ and that is the best news ever because Jesus Christ was God manifest in the flesh he lived a perfect sinless life a life I could never live a life you could never live a life nobody else could ever live uh, you know and he went to that cross willingly and you know he who knew no sin became sin for us he died on the cross for our sins and the sins of the whole world uh, so that we could have his righteousness imputed onto our account and you know he's able to justify us from all things from everything and you know he he really did pay for your sins uh, he did it because he loves you and he doesn't want you to go to hell and uh, he rose from the dead for our justification and uh, you know his resurrection is a great comfort uh, over the fact that he you know he, he really is who he says he is he did what he said he would do and there's an empty grave okay <laughs> and Um, you know his his disciples back then they risked their lives uh, literally over trying to tell people about Jesus Christ and nobody in their right mind would risk their lives over something they never saw Okay, and the Bible clearly teaches that Jesus Christ rose from the dead and he was seen by over 500 brethren. And, you know, people handled him, they touched him, they, you know, ate with him. And, uh, and, you know, some of them saw him ascend up into heaven. And, you know, they spread the message uh, to every continent okay, over time. And many of them died as if they were, you know, martyred. You know, that's what I meant to say. And again, nobody in the right mind 
would be killed over something they didn't see. Okay. But they couldn't deny what they saw. They couldn't deny who Jesus is. And, uh, you know, one of the big things that makes Christianity different is uh, the fact that it, uh, you know, it, it conquers hearts. It's not, it's not something that can be accomplished by the sword through violence. Um, though many people uh, want to act like it can, but it, you can't force somebody to believe something. It's just not possible. Either you believe it or you don't. Right? Um, if you point a gun to somebody's head, uh, you know, they could lie about what they believe, but you know you can't you can't literally force them to believe something. <laughs> um, and another different thing about Christianity is that it's the only religion that has a concrete solution. Okay, every other religion tries to tell you that you know you have to do a list of things to be justified before God but they can't tell you what that list is you know in, in its completion they can't tell you exactly what you have to do and you know they, they can't even guarantee you that if you follow their list that you'll be justified because they really don't know Christianity says that you can know that you have eternal life, that you can know that you are justified before God. And the Bible teaches that Jesus Christ is able to reconcile people back unto God. Uh, if only they would believe on him. Okay. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever uh, shall believe in him, or whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But look, if you believe on him, you will you will be saved. And yes, whoever shall believe on him will be saved. I just like quoting the, the King James verse three. You know, whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have uh, everlasting life. And uh, I didn't necessarily intend this to be a gospel message, but I do like preaching the gospel. And, you know, <laughs> and it's always worth it. Uh, so, you know, if, if you don't know Jesus, uh, you can know him, okay? <laughs> he died for your sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures, and he loves you dearly. When he was on that cross, he thought about you, and the cross is proof that he loves you. And, you know, if you're a Christian and you want to make videos, uh, don't worry about people making fun of you, okay? People mock Jesus Christ, and if they mock Jesus Christ, they're definitely going to mock you. Um, but, uh, you know, if you ever suffer for the cause of Christ, rejoice, leap for joy. It's... Uh, you might not think it right now, but it, it's a good thing, okay? Um, and, you know, the, the preaching of the cross, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, okay? But unto us, which are saved, it is the power of God. But remember, you know, if, if our gospel be hid, it's hid, it's hid to them that are lost. So uh, let's uh, share the gospel with people. Take care.